Hi everybody! Today I am going to be showing how to create the torn paper, also known as chipped paint technique. And stay with me and I'm going to show you how we create this very easily. Hi, I am Chris Hoy. Thank you for joining me today. Wasn't sure I was going to be able to uh, make it today for Create with Chris. Had a lot going on this morning. But everything fell into place and yay, here I am. So today I wanted to share this amazing technique. And this is something, let me zoom in just a little bit, that is quite impressive. It's this chipped paint look. And I always have so much fun with this because people always have to feel and say, what, how did you decoupage that? What, you know, how do you get that paper to stick on there? And guess what? It is all paint and it's just a very simple technique to create. And let me tell you, uh, whenever you're painting, if you have issues with uh, something that goes awry and you're saying, oh no, I didn't want that to happen, um, I will tell you this is a result of a boo-boo and I was getting ready to wipe it off and my little creative mind said, hey, wonder what if so I just took it and played with it and lo and behold created a new technique which I am just absolutely crazy about so let me show you how this um, is created I am using tools that you need I'm using my radical round this is Chris's radical round the number five uh, love this brush it has a nice fat belly nice sharp point so I can load a ton of paint in there still maintain that pointy edge. I'm gonna move this out of the way. Um, you can either use, this is my Epic 18 knot script liner, you can either use this and white paint or the white uniball and this is one of my favorite if you're looking for a good opaque white pen this one is really really nice. Okay let's get started. Like I said, this was a result of an accident. And I've got a piece here that I painted a while back, never finished up. And I was trying to think of something that I could use for a sample. And I thought, oh, that would be nice with that chipped edge. Uh, this is a piece that I had painted. These are stamped images. So this is a, another fun project. But with the uh, chipped paint edge, the torn paper edge, very impressive technique. Now I've got my... Uh, move this over. I've got my radical round. Maybe go in just a little bit more. It's damp, but it's not drippy wet. So I dipped it in the water, just laid it on the paper towel to draw out the excess moisture. And I'm going to load it up pretty heavy in the paint. Now I always say you want to make sure that you don't overload your brush. Well with this, um, I have a lot of paint on there. I want to be able to really apply it. It's nice and thick, but I still don't have a big blob on the end. When I accidentally found out, or this technique kind of happened, well, what happened was I dropped my brush and it rolled. And when it rolled, it created this jaggedy look. So keep that in mind. I always say hold your brush in your hand let's go back just a little bit like you're holding a cookie kind of between your thumb and your forefinger and you can roll the brush back and forth go back just a little further so I always say it helps if you flip your little pinky up a bit because that kind of takes a little bit of pressure off the grip it looks cool too but actually what it does it relieves some of the pressure on the grip helps you relax a little more so if you keep your ring finger and your little pinky kind of loosen up in the air just pretend you're drinking a cup of elegant tea and we'll do it that way now I have my brush loaded pretty heavily and I'm going to hold my piece at an angle I'll try to see if we can do it this way now I'm going to point my brush with the tip over the edge you don't want to roll it in because it won't work you have to roll it out got that it has to be tip pointing out over the edge now 
the width of the chip depends on the sharpness of the angle. So if I have it really tight, I'm going to hold it sideways here. If I have it really tight against it with a small angle, I'm going to get just a, a tiny chip. If I have a, I'm sorry, the tighter you get it, the bigger the chip. The less of an angle, you'll get a small, small chip. So you can see, let me move that up just a little, see how tiny that is and how big that is. And I'll just reload and you just kind of rock it between your finger and your thumb and you're going to get that jaggedy look. Random jaggedness is a good thing. I always think when you have a corner, if you're looking for something that is a little more appropriately aged, the corners always chip off of everything first. So you can make that a little heavier on the corner. It's going to look a little more realistic. Oops. And don't worry about if you get it an oopsie on there because this is torn paper. Now my brush is getting a little dry and it's not rolling off the paint well. So I just picked up a little more water and I should be able to, yeah, there we go. Now I don't like so much, let me zoom in a little bit more. Um, I prefer to not have so many little jiggity jaggedy edges. I like this smoother, kind of more spread out effect and for a couple reasons. It doesn't look so busy and also when we go back to add our little bit of uh, edging on that it's going to be a lot less work. So let me go back out and see how quickly I can roll right around the edge of this. I'm going to pick up a little more water. I'm using soft black. Any dark color works well. Again, here in the corner, I'm going to pick it up and just do a little heavier there. And I can just roll that back and forth, keep that little pinky up. I'll just go right over those stems. You can go back over it. If you don't like the way it looks, wipe it off. And, and probably a good idea if you're just starting out and want to test this, because this piece is already finished and you're going, oh, it looks so good. I'm not sure I'm going to like that. Go ahead and put your varnish on and finish it up because it will create a safety net. And if you're not real happy with it, all you have to do is go back and say, oh, I'm not crazy about that and just wipe it off. So it um, takes a little bit of stress and worry off of your creativeness if you don't have to deal with that. Now they're getting a little bit wide down here, so I'm going to reduce the angle of my brush. See how I can just scoot along the edge? Going just a little bit. Whoops, whoops, wrong way here. Again, I want to get that corner nice and heavy. And I was, if you've done this for a while, you can go rather quickly. And can you see how these little jig jags are kind of going this way? That's because I didn't have my plaque perpendicular to my brush. I have my brush rolling at an angle. So if your little jig jags go, start looking like ocean waves, um, check the angle of your brush because it needs to be pointed right over the edge. I'm just going to wipe that off. And get a little cleaner there. Load my brush up. I'm kind of working in a small area here. And I'll just go back over that. And you need to constantly turn your plaque so that your brush will have the right, not only the right angle, but the right direction as well. Okay, so I've scooted all around this, added that. Isn't that cool? But wait, there's more. Okay, I'm going to clean my brush out. You really do need to wait until this dries before we do the next step. It probably is fairly dry, but I do happen to have another one here that I've, a while back I added the um, 
paint around the edges. I can take, and I've got my 18 knot script liner. This is what I started out with. You know how everything evolves and you go from um, starting one way and then you always try to look for a better way. Well, this is what I kind of came up with. Started out with my 18 knot script liner. I have it loaded well with Snow White paint and I'm working it into the bristles. I have a lot of paint on there, uh, a little bit of water so it flows well, but I still have a nice slender barrel on my brush. I want to make sure that I don't have any um, heaviness of paint. Just going to stay up on the tips and I'm just going to enhance that outer edge. If your brush is loaded correctly, you should be able to do quite a bit of highlighting before you need to go back and reload. Now I'm putting that on there and I can just absolutely zoom right around the edge of that. Again, you can notice if you have a lot of jig jags on there, it's gonna take a little, little bit more time and patience I'm not too fussy about it getting it exact. After all, this is torn paper, so you're going to have some, uh, if you've ever torn paper, you're going to have some heavy and not so heavy areas. Oh, I keep going off cam here, sorry about that. And we can just add that right around there. Don't worry about what's behind it or in front of it. You're just trying to get that edging on there. Again, I'm off the camera here. Okay, that works out really well. 18 knot script liner, perfect for this little technique. However, Chris got to thinking, you know what? That takes a lot of time. And we're all busy gals and guys. So what happens if I use my little, um, Uniball white pen. So I tested that out and I'll tell you what, it is awesome because you got one width on the line. Let me get it started here. And I can just follow that right around. I don't have to reload. I might run into a little bit of a problem here because my paint is just a little bit damp always works better with a dry okay and the other thing you're going to run into if this is not completely dry you're going to end up plugging up your ink pen so I'm going to go back to this one sorry I don't want to ruin my pen there we go yeah it was just too wet can you see huge difference this little final touch, I always say it's the little things that actually make the biggest difference on a project. And this is one of those little things. Look at that. I mean, my goodness. Let's go out a little bit. Look at this area compared to this area that doesn't have any of that white on it. This adds so much dimension, just having that little white lip. This is the secret to making that chipped edge look realistic. Okay guys, how simple is that? You just take your radical round, get your paint loaded on it, roll it around the edge, make sure you turn your plaque so that your brush, keep in mind your angle, the direction that the brush is pointed, the angle of the brush is going to determine the width of the chip. So the, the tighter the angle, the wider it's going to be. The higher up the angle, let's go this way, the higher up, the smaller it will be. Does that make sense? So we've got our angle determined by the, or the width of the chip determined by the angle of the brush. And you want to make sure to keep it, um, what is, what is this? perpendicular to the edge, I think is the word. You don't want to angle it because then your little chips will start angling that way too and it looks kind of a little bit odd. Super, super easy technique. Now, that farmhouse look is so huge today. We'll go back to the P2000 
piece that I had the sample on. Let's see. Having this chip on the edges of this, turn this from just a, a nice piece. I mean, look how those edges are defined. Just absolutely elevates this to a different level by having these chips on here. Uh, this is what varnish to use with the pen. Okay, um, somebody asked what varnish to use with the pen. Let me tell you, I for, almost forgot to talk about that, so thank you for reminding me. The white unit ball pen is excellent. The opacity is wonderful. However, it will reactivate with moisture. I'm telling you what, you spend all that time going around the edge and you take a brush varnish and you go over it, it will all disappear. So keep that in mind. Usually what I do is after um, I get it finished, I use the Americana Matte Spray Varnish. Put a light coat on it, it's gonna set it. Usually put a couple coats on. If you're an avid uh, brush varnish person, put a couple coats of spray varnish on, then you can go over it with brush on varnish. But yes, this will reactivate with moisture and disappear. So make sure that you use a spray varnish to set the ink on the pen. That's one thing you don't have to worry about with a brush. So, you, you know, you got to balance between the, the time and uh, meticulousness of using a script liner and white paint or zooming around with your uniball. Okay, another sample. This one is a little bit darker um, palette. And so, let me go in. To, oops, sorry. The edging on this one really, really stands out. What a huge difference. And if you can kind of visualize not having that white edging on there, it just be kind, you know, it almost looks like it's unfinished. Another fun one, and I'm doing kind of fall and Halloween ones now. This, this was a fun one. This um, crackle is that toxic stamp. I've always been kind of, um, that leery about crackle medium and all that, but I found this crackle stamp. It's amazing. Sorry, Lindsay, this is the toxic stamp. So she's trying to put up all the, um, the items that I'm using. So I'm throwing one in on her that I forgot to mention. But isn't this a fun piece? Look how cool. For Halloween, this is so perfect. Look what a um, kind of an aged effect this gives. And you know, you can go in and add some shading and color washing and just add so much. Okay, can you use this for Christmas? Absolutely. Oh, sorry. This is my, ooh, got another big one here. Okay, this is my Santa. And it kind of had that rustic look. I went all the way around the edge, all the way around the edge, even his beard. And it really added so much. Just kind of um, makes it look kind of whimsical, a little bit aged. Again, I went in with that crackle stamp just to add some more design. Fun, fun piece. Can you use this on little ornaments? Absolutely. Look what a difference this edging makes on this little tiny ornament. I always say this is such a fun way to, if you're not sure what kind of edging or border, you're working on something and you think, oh, I think it needs something around the outside edge and you're thinking about doing a stripe or, you know, think about this. This is a really great way to finish it off. Another one I did with the edging just adds so much. Whoops, I keep going the wrong way, Chris. Figure it out here. Okay, there's another one. This one is an older piece that I did. It has that vintage look. And I'm honest to goodness, everybody always comes up to this and picks at it. What kind of paper did you use on this? What? Just stenciled a design, did the edging around it. 
Wow, how cool is that? It's just so much fun. Okay, every day. We did Christmas, we did fall. Here's an everyday piece. This is a small ornament. Just has that, it just needed that something around the edge. This is another piece I did. It was kind of different. I did a set of four. I think I did a cherry, an apple, a pear, and a peach. Just a great way to make them all kind of uh, fit together. And don't forget patriotic. I love doing this with patriotic because I think, whoops, I think with patriotic, it just really um, adds that vintage feel that we absolutely love. So, if you have any questions, Lindsay's over there monitoring my questions, so let me know if you have any other questions. Again, what I used today was my number five radical round. If you're going to paint the border a little white, that's the 18-aught script liner my epic script liner and the white uniball gel pen. Fun, fun technique. I really encourage you to try this. You can have so much, um, create so many different looks with it using different colors, but give it a try. Keep in mind, now remember the angle and um, the direction of the brush and that's going to be your key. So thank you for joining me today. I'm glad we were able to get together. I uh, have a lot more fun techniques to share with you in the future, so uh, look forward. Join me, we'll Create with Chris, hopefully next week. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.